Switcher South Africa in proud association with Change Cars. Change Cars is a trusted online website because they work with trusted dealers and the best insure in South Africa. Discovery Insure. Welcome back to Switcher South Africa. I'm Nick Nash as always, and today you guys join me in the X1. And the first thing we're going to do um, in this BMW is show you that this car has reverse assist for people that don't know how to. If you want to reverse out and you don't want to do the work, they will do it for you. So for people like me who is currently handicapped, only has one hand, I click reverse assist, the car will do everything for me. So yeah, my hands and then the car's turning. See? Done! Anyway, um, we'll do more of that a bit later. So today you guys join me in the BMW X1. I'm in the 18i. 18i? Hmm. I can, what, what can I tell you about this vehicle? Honestly, there's so much to tell you about this car. So I'm going to cover that in this review. We're going to speak about the extra look of the vehicle, the intro look of the vehicle, the overall drive, th things that I like about the vehicle, things that things I don't like about the car and then I'm gonna tell you is it worth the asking price of the car my recommendation and cost of ownership and we submit up let's get it so the BMW X1 let's take a look at the vehicle it looks as so subjective but um, I'm gonna tell you what I think about the vehicle so I like the look of the vehicle in front um, the car looks quite good quite beautiful in front you can tell that it's a BMW it looks very it look, I, it look commanding in front I like that about the vehicle um, a part I don't like about the car, it has to be the rear. I am not a fan of the rear of this vehicle one bit. Um, it's yet to grow on me and I've seen this car multiple of times on the roads and I don't think it'll ever grow on me. Um, it's just one of those just one of those vehicles. Um, but they should look at the car, it's quite it's okay man. It's not um, a vehicle that's necessarily that I wouldn't like, but um, it's okay. Front I like, rear I don't like rear I don't like, side profile is okay. So I'm in the X line, I'm not, I'm not in the in the in the M sport, so the M package with all the nice funky bits. Um, but this one is quite good as well, as just the way it is. So jumping into the interior, I think that's where as much as there's a lot of changes and controversial controversial thoughts in terms of the exterior, the main thing that customers will enjoy is the interior. Why I say interior is because a lot has, has gone into changing the interior of the vehicle. BMW has really said, you know what, we've heard our customer base complain or people in general complain that all BMWs look the same. Um, BMW is not futuristic, BMW is not fancy in terms of their interior, they just dull. So BMW said, alright, we hear you guys and you know what, we're going to do away with our traditional stuff. We're going to give you a big flat screen TV inside the car. We're going to put the climate control systems inside the infotainment system. So no more volume buttons. We're going to take away that CD player um, thing that we had going on. And we're going to be like the, all, all the other brands and give you flat screens. And you know what? They're like, yeah, they gave you. So when you get into the side of the vehicle, you get a nice big uh, 65 um, LED TV. Uh, I mean, infotainment system in front of you, you know? <laughs> So it's um, it's nice. Um, obviously, there's brands that are doing a lot of this, and so BMW is keeping up the times. You greet you by this lovely inf infotainment system, digital di instrument cluster, telling you every single thing you need to know about the vehicle. The infotainment system is okay; it's within reach, um, depending obviously on your driving position. But my driving position, it's within reach. Um, what I don't like, and it's something that I don't know why BMW um, stopped, but BMW used to have a. Um, a wheel right that you could control the infotainment system with without having to reach there but this x1 does not have that so everything if you want to control you need to touch in the infotainment system and sometimes you don't want to be driving and touching there so for someone like me that's currently handicapped driving with one hand it's not the best thing so i need to be stationary and then play around so right now i'm feeling hot so i need to do what click the climate control switch on the aircon so it's <laughs> but to some people they'll, they'll, they'll be fine with it i'm not necessarily a fan of it i hope bmw could have kept the the, um, the silver wheel it would have been much easier but moving on to everything else about the interior of the vehicle it looks very futuristic it looks good the quality of, of the infotainment system is quite good as well um i like how it looks in, in, in terms of the interior it's a good it's a good looking vehicle the seats as well are quite good what i don't like um is the fact that i get that there's the entry level because there's two models there's the x-line that i'm in then there's the m sport as much as this is the x-line for the price of the vehicle i shouldn't be getting this beige um interior um, yes interior or roof lining there's the word i'm looking for roof lining at least give me some black roof lining um but people are different it might just be me but you might also not like it 
With regards to the infotainment system, there is so much I can speak about the infotainment system. I can tell you night and day about this infotainment system, but unfortunately, I'm not going to do that. Um, it's a lot of work to cover all that. So even for someone that has had the vehicle for a couple of days, there's things I'm going to miss with regards to the infotainment system. And you know, it's, I'm just going to let it be. Um, people that will be buying the vehicle, you know what you're getting yourself to. You'll know that you'll need to experience this vehicle for yourself, teach yourself everything there is to know about this vehicle in terms of the, of the infotainment system. Um, but overall, moving on to the drive of the vehicle, what do I think about the drive of the vehicle? The car drives well. So I'm in the 18D, so there's an 18i. Quick quick fact about the 18i. The 18i is a 1.5 liter, three cylinder turbocharged um, engine um, with a seven speed um, dog clutch gearbox. Now here's the difference with the one I'm currently in. Because I'm in the, two, I'm in the diesel, um, diesel variant. So the diesel variant comes with a two liter turbocharged engine yes two lit no 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 two liter turbo diesel engine my mistake sorry two liter turbo diesel engine um four cylinder um and instead of a, a seven speed um dog clutch gearbox it gets a eight speed um, automatic gearbox so that's where you can tell that the the gearbox is is, is set per per engine um so for the per collaboration so in terms of the drive of the vehicle the car sh shifts smoothly the, you hardly hear the gear changes or you feel the gear changes. For me, I hardly felt the gear changes in this vehicle. Um, it moves through the gears quite well. It feels quite good as well. Something that you pick up a lot um, is when you put in this specific vehicle. I don't know if you feel it in the in the, in the in the petrol variant, but in this specific one, um, from standstill or even from any from any speed under 50, you put your foot down like foot flat, you get a lot of torque steer, or even like 80 percent, you get a lot a lot of torque steer. So that's a bit of a of a, of a disadvantage in terms of the vehicle um so the fact that this one is front wheel drive and these vehicles only come in front wheel drive um i feel like bmw could have done somehow to mitigate the whole torque steer torque steer i'm sure people are asking i'm sure some of you guys are asking what the hell is torque steer torque steer is when you put your foot flat right the car is facing forward but the steering wheel is going left right and you can't trust steering so you the car wants to go right, but you're steering left. The car wants to go left, you're steering right, just to keep it in a straight line. Because of the amount of power or torque the car is picking up, that what, that's what torque steer is. And so for certain people, they don't mind it. It's nice, you know, in a sports car, torque steer is nice. It's a good thing. Like you'll be like, you feel like a racer, but in the next one, it's not something you'd want. Um, looking at the clientele and the customer base, that or the people that those cars aim at, is aimed at, well, for me, I'd like to think it's aimed at young mothers or females you know so a lot of people are not people buying an x1 you know someone that wants to be you no know, left right left right in the next one um so a lot of a lot of people those cars are gonna catch them by surprise in terms of when they put the foot flat they're gonna feel the toxic they're gonna be like oh what's that what's that so but you know what you live and learn such things um but overall the car is quite good the one i'm in something that you need to i need to speak about and Commend very well is that this car has no hybrid assistance, right? But the diesel in here does wonders in terms of it gives you the power 100%. That's one, but the fuel efficiency BMW claims a fuel efficiency of five liters, and they're being generous with the five liters because I've been I've been averaging 4.0 is the lowest I saw, but other than that, I've been averaging around 4.7, 4.6. And what does that mean in a car like this? So looking at those, those specific vehicle, when it was delivered to me, the range was saying 955. I drove over, I drove 130 k's or so, and my range was still saying 930. So what does that mean? In this vehicle, you can easily, and I mean easily, see that 900. I even feel if you're doing a long distance trip, you know, capping it at like 100 kilometers or 120, you'll easily see close to close to a thousand or even over a thousand in this vehicle. So. There's a lot to look forward to in terms of the drive of this vehicle and it's something that I do like about the car. It's very fuel efficient. Um, it's a good car for low for trips. It gives you the space. You get the interior space, you get the boost space as well. And because of the size of the vehicle. So the first Gen X one was, uh, compared to this one, was a small vehicle. Um, but BMW has bumped this vehicle up so much to a point where, to a point where those cars not necessarily quite close, but it's 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 leaping towards the X3 in terms of size. You put this in the X3 side by side, you can tell that, you can tell obviously tell that the X3 is bigger, but you can see that ooh, the X1 is quite big. It's like putting it's like putting the the X3 against side by side with an X5. You can tell the X5 is bigger, but you'd be like ooh, 
X3 also quite big. So that's how the X, the, X, the X1 and the X3 look side by side. And feeling wise interior, you can tell that the X3 is bigger, but this is, doesn't feel small. That's one thing I can give you. That doesn't feel small. It gives you everything you need to know. So let's speak about three things I don't like about the car and three things I like about the car. Then we'll do cost of ownership and then we'll wrap up the review. So three things I don't like about the vehicle. Number one that I don't like about the vehicle is the auto start stop. Why I don't like the auto start stop in this vehicle? Before the car comes to a complete stop, it already it has already switched off. So when you're doing like when, while you're rolling very slowly, it switches off the engine and then you get back on the power and then it kicks up again. So that's one thing I don't like. The second thing I don't like about the vehicle is that it switches itself off when it feels like it. Let me elaborate on that. So for example, if I'm at home, right, and I get to my gate and I, and I want to physically open my gate, right? So I'll put the car in park, right? And then open the door so I can go open the gate. But, um, but I would like to keep the car on because I'm going to come back and drive into my yard. In this vehicle, once you put the car in park, once you open the door, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens most of the time. Once you open the door, the car switches off, it tells you goodbye, all of that stuff. So you'll get out, go open the gate. When you come back, be like drive no 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 you must start the vehicle again so i don't like that about the vehicle and the third thing i don't like about the vehicle it has to do with in terms of the lack of space right in terms of the center console there's a lot of space you can put stuff but it's open so in the country we live in, in south africa it's not advised for you to put your you should be seeing one place you wouldn't put your phone out here in the open and go park and leave and and leave your phone out in the open and park the vehicle in the mall because you come back trust me you're gonna find your car window smashed phone gone or whatever that was out in the open gone so the only closed compartment is very small to a point where even my card holder can't fit um you should be saying you should be seeing overplay videos of that so there's a third thing i don't like about the vehicle but enough bad let's talk about the good the good things about the vehicle the three good things i like about the car one i like the look of the vehicle in front it looks good i have to give it that I like the look of the vehicle in front. Two, I like how futuristic it is in, in terms of the interior. As much as that I don't like the climate controls and the infotainment system and everything and everything um, needs to be I need to be touching to, to minimize. That's one thing I don't that's, that's as much as I don't like that, right? I do like how BMW are taking the futuristic way in terms of the whole screen design. Like there's so many things you can do. Um you should be seeing now there's this, there's my modes and you can put the car into sport efficient. Obviously, you can do that in like many other vehicles, but this car has something called digital art, um, and then it changes up the vehicle. There's something called digital art. There's something called expressive, and you can customize all of that. And you know what? When you own the car, or when you're interested in the car, you will love those little gimmicks, and you'll play around with those stuff. That's the first thing. That's the second thing I like about the vehicle, and the third thing I like about the vehicle, I think that that's one of my favorite things, is essentially the fuel efficiency. You're looking at what claim fuel efficiency of five liters but i've been averaging 4.6 lowest i went down to four i can do over 900 k's i have to love that there's no way i cannot love that and this is the third thing i like of the vehicle let's talk about cost of ownership of the car and then we wrap it up cost of ownership of the vehicle Woo so this car this specific one the x-line 18d is priced at 790,000 Rand and that's on launch obviously now you're looking at just 800,000 Rand but going at the launch price 790,000 Rand if you finance that over five years at an interest rate of 12.25 with zero with zero percent deposit you're looking at paying 17,600 Rand um monthly repayments right um you factor fuel into that this car is a 55 liter the current fuel price you're looking at 1.2 um in terms of your, of your full tank and you factor all of that you're looking at just under 19,000 rand um for, for for your monthly repayments on this vehicle and then there's still insurance to to look at that so you need to have a good 20,000 rand for this vehicle if you're buying it with no with no, with no deposit and 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 but obviously depending on the type of person you are you can choose different types of you can do a balloon payment you can do over seven years you can do over eight years but i wouldn't advise you to do that but yeah that's the cost of ownership of the vehicle now in terms of recommendation this car obviously is an x1 what it competes with it competes with the likes of an x uh, of a audi q3 volvo c40 um and those are good offerings but i'm yet to drive any of those vehicles hopefully i'll get an opportunity to drive those vehicles so i can tell you you know what get this vehicle or get those but you know what i'm like kill it i'm gonna kill the review here end it here 
um, until I get those other vehicles and then you know what I hope you guys did like the content and as always I'm Nikki Nash from Sutra South Africa I hope you guys like the content and I'll see you in the next one and guess what the next one is well it's a launch but after the launch it's another BMW